Pericles' 5th century building program on the Athenian Acropolis was a monumental and innovative accomplishment that holds architectural, religious, and historical significance. The program was built during a period of dominance and prosperity in Athens, constructed with a high level of craftsmanship, artists, and materials. The site continues to be a major icon of the achievements and legacy of Athens during the Classical period. However, it is impossible to fully understand the classical Acropolis without understanding Athenian history and the events leading up to the building program. For that, we must go back to 490 BCE and take a look at the ongoing war between Athens and Persia, starting with the Battle of Marathon. Coined as the Battle of Marathon, 490 BCE marked the first invasion of the Persians in Greece. The Persians benefited from great size and resources. However, despite having the odds against them, 10,000 brave Athenian soldiers charged 20,000 Persian invaders and managed to kill thousands and turn the rest back to sea. This battle gave Athenians a boost in both morale and prestige, after losing only a small sum of men compared to their opponents. Athens lost only 162 soldiers that day, compared to the 6,400 men that were lost on the Persian side. The Battle of Marathon marked one of the most significant events in the history of Athens, as they defeated the army of an empire. The Acropolis at this time included two 6th century limestone buildings, which were the Old Temple of Athena and the Old Parthenon, along with other small treasury-like buildings and a bronze statue of Athena Promachos located just inside the gateway. Following the victory at Marathon, construction on the so-called Older Parthenon began. It was going to be a temple made completely out of marble to commemorate the victory at the Battle of Marathon and offer thanks to the goddess of Athena. However, due to the ongoing war with Persia, this predecessor to the Parthenon was never completed. Despite being defeated at Marathon, the Persians continued their threat to Athens in their quest to conquer the city, and ten years later following the Battle at Marathon, a large fleet and land army came back and invaded Athens, seeking revenge. The population of Athens was left with no choice but to evacuate. The Persians occupied Athens, took siege of the Acropolis, and burned the city down, destroying the temples and buildings that adorned the Acropolis and reducing the site to rubble. The Acropolis, along with the rest of the city, was in ruins. A few days later, an allied Athenian navy was victorious in a naval battle against the Persian fleet off of the island of Salamis. In 479, the Greek mainland was freed from Persian threat following the demolition of the Persian land army at Plataea. This marked the end of the Archaic period and the beginning of the Classical period. Following the Persian Wars, the Athenians returned to rebuild the city that was left in ruins. There is evidence of a few modest buildings being constructed on the Acropolis in the 460s, but for three decades no monumental building program was initiated on the sacred citadel. Archaeological records suggest that the Greeks may have taken an oath prior to the Battle of Plataea that they would leave the demolished sanctuaries and temples in ruins rather than rebuilding them so that they could act as a permanent reminder of Persian barbarism. These sites on the Acropolis, therefore, remained in ruins for almost a generation. The Greeks' anxiety of another Persian invasion continued, and in the 470s, the Athenians saw the opportunity to create an alliance with other city-states in case the Persians came back. The Allies had the option of giving either money or ships in exchange for protection from Persians. The treasury of the alliance was located on the island of Delos, which is why this alliance was referred to as the Delian League. With Athens as the leaders of this alliance, they continued to grow during the 5th century, becoming a dominant city-state and an Athenian empire. Pericles, Athenian statesman and skilled politician, controlled the fortunes of the city from 461 up until his death in 429. His reign was marked by Athenian dominance as political and economic life flourished, leading the age of Pericles in Athens to be considered the high point of the Classical period. Near the middle of the 5th century, the Peace of Callias was made with Persia, removing the threat of invasion and disassembling the Delian League. As a result, Pericles wanted to revoke the Oath of Plataea and use the contributions of money from the alliance to rebuild the temples and sanctuaries that were destroyed by the Persians. Despite opposition from allies, by 450 BCE, Pericles initiated a public works building program through the expenditure of allied money that transformed the Acropolis, where it became one of the most iconic cultural symbols of Western civilization. Through the radical remaking of the summit, this project marked the high classical remaking of the Acropolis. The main components of the building program include the Parthenon, the Propylaea, the Erechtheion, and the Temple of Athena Nike. 
The program reiterates Athenian status and position as the head of a defensive alliance against the Persians, as well as the rebuilding of the religious core of Athens. The building program was marked both by its beauty, sheer scale, as well as the short duration of the project, as it was believed that the undertakings would take several successions of men. However, the buildings were executed with such speed that they were completed during one man's administration, making each building an object of wonder. Now let's take a closer look at the buildings on the Acropolis, starting with the Parthenon. The Parthenon was one of the first buildings to be constructed, beginning in 447, by architects Ictinos and Calocrates. It is considered the focal point of the program, symbolizing the power and wealth of Periclean Athens. The Parthenon is a large Doric temple dedicated to Athena and constructed entirely out of marble. There are three key features of the Parthenon that distinguish it from other Greek temples, including the plan, the architectural details, and sculptural adornment. The temple's plan consists of a 4 to 9 ratio throughout. Unlike other Doric temples, the Parthenon has 8 columns arranged on its front rather than 6, adding to the monumentality of the building as a whole and allowing for innovations in the design of the interior space. The interior plan consists of four sections including the front porch, the cella, a separate back chamber, and a back porch. No Greek temple included the volume of sculptural decorations as did the Parthenon. The sculpture was located in the exterior Doric frieze, the Ionic frieze, the golden ivory statue, and the pediments. The sculptural program depicts historical scenes and reinforces Pericles' view of Athens, as it honors Athena while also acting as a victory monument for Athens in their struggle against Persia. The Parthenon also acted as a huge treasury holding state funds and other offerings belonging to the Athenians. Fun fact about the Parthenon, there are no straight lines in the building. The column shafts taper upwards, the corner columns are slightly larger in diameter than the other columns, and all of them incline inwards, leaning slightly towards the center of the building. These subtle deviations and a rich combination of refinements set the temple apart from other classical buildings, as they required a high level of craftsmanship adding to the visual interest and grandeur of the building. Now let's talk about the Propylaea. Following the construction of the Parthenon, the monumental gateway to the Acropolis was constructed. Designed by architect Nesicles, the gateway was completed in five years, between 437 and 432. In rebuilding the gateway, Pericles decided to reorient the gateway so that it would be aligned directly with the old temple of Athena Polius, which was left in ruins. This decision emphasized the significance of honoring the goddess of Athena on the citadel. The plan of the building includes a large central hall with two western wings flanking the entrance. Despite the impression of symmetry, up close the southwest and northwest wings are not perfectly symmetrical, as the southwest wing was built snugly against the Mycenaean wall. The central hallway acts as the main entrance to the Acropolis, with six large door columns that lead into a deep hallway lined by three ionic columns on each side, combining architectural orders. The central doorway was approached by a ramp rather than stairs, leading into the Doric portico of the east facade of the building, with a view of the rest of the Acropolis. Unlike other Greek sanctuaries, which were often built without the acknowledgement of surrounding structures, the Propylaea has a unique visual relation to the Parthenon. Despite not being on the same axis, the gateway is almost exactly parallel to the axis of the Parthenon, creating a spatial alignment that suggests that this was part of the overall design program of the Acropolis. The Propylaea was a significant Athenian accomplishment as gatehouses at this time were not expected to be rich and costly, making the Propylaea an assertion of the dominance and growth of Periclean Athens. Now let's look at the Temple of Athena Nike. The third building constructed in the Periclean building program was the Temple of Athena Nike. Located next to the Propylaea, the temple was much smaller in scale with ionic columns only on the front and back. The exterior of the temple includes a rich sculptural program with one of the main themes being victory, as it includes battle scenes showing Greeks fighting Persians. The sanctuary was completely rebuilt to harmonize with the other major projects on the Acropolis. As a result, it received a new bastion made out of limestone, bringing the level of the bastion up to the level of the gateway. Projecting from the Acropolis, the three faces of the building seem to extend victory to the city of Athens. Lastly, let's talk about the Erechtheon. The Erechtheon, located on the north side of the Acropolis, was the final temple constructed under Pericles. Replacing the late archaic temple that stood just to the south before destruction by the Persians in 480, the Erechtheon was a remarkably luxurious sacred space home of the cult statue of Athena Polius. In order to distinguish this temple from the Parthenon, which was located in close proximity, the architect built the temple in the Ionic order rather than the Doric order. The Ionic columns are significantly thinner with voluted capitals. 
The temple also includes more carving on its decorative moldings compared to the unadorned Parthenon. The temple has a unique plan that incorporates various blocks into one structure, giving it a split-level nature similar to the Propylaea. The building includes six columns on the east side of the building and four columns built into the west wall. A large ionic porch projects from the long north wall, and a smaller porch including sculpted maidens acting as columns is found on the south wall. The unusual plan of the building can be attributed to the topography of the site as the building was built into a steep sloping ground. It is also believed that the plan was influenced by the fact that there were several sacred spots surrounding this site, in which the architect ensured not to encroach on during construction. Before we wrap up this lesson, there's one more key idea I want you to take away from this 5th century building program. It's important to note that the complete destruction of the site gave Athenians the opportunity to rebuild from a clean slate, however they refused to do so. Therefore, a significant and principal theme of the program is its exploitation of earlier remains reveling in its own archaeology and past. The program preserved older pre-Periclean walls, buildings, and statues as they were intentionally incorporated into the Periclean program. For example, the Erechtheion was constructed partially atop the foundations of the archaic temple of Athena Polius. The structure was remodeled on the southern boundary of the temple with the famous porch resting on the archaic wall of the old temple. The Parthenon's plan was also an expansion of the earlier building, reusing and recutting column drums quarried for the older Parthenon. The remains of the buildings that were destroyed during the Persian invasions were also built into the new north citadel wall, displaying the ruins high above the city of Athens, transforming these remains into a war memorial and creating a form of commemoration displayed in the citadel walls. Therefore, Despite having the opportunity to wipe the slate clean and remake the sanctuary completely new, Pericles architects and designers wanted to combine new with the ancient by building upon or beside old buildings and monuments, creating links to the past and preserving the long history of the Acropolis, making it a landscape of memory.